Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make miniature books. I'll be showing you step by step how to bind your own mini books by hand from scratch. And I'll also show you how to add a soft cover, in this case a leather cover. If you'd prefer to add a hardback cover instead, I have a separate video on my channel that shows you how to do just that. I actually filmed this tutorial a few years ago and it's been on the Skillshare website ever since. However, I recently decided to move all of my Skillshare classes to YouTube and that's why this particular video is in a different format and is longer than my normal videos. So if you notice any references to Skillshare or class projects, then now you know why. I really hope you enjoy this project and thank you very much for watching. I'm going to quickly run through all the necessary items that you need and then I'm going to run through them again a bit more slowly explaining what you're going to need them for, perhaps alternatives you could use instead, um, maybe where you can buy these items and just more information that I think you might find helpful. I'll then run through any optional extras that you might like to buy, that you might like to use just to add something different to the project or make, make your life easier. So I'm just going to go and run through them now. You'll need a pen, an accurate ruler, a bulldog clip, a drawing pin or push pin, a beading needle, a couple of cocktail sticks, some beading thread, some scrap cardboard or packaging, all purpose glue like this tacky glue or just regular PVA, super glue, scissors, a scrap of leather. And last but not least, just regular printer paper. And now I'm going to run through those essentials one more time, but slower and adding more information that you may find useful. The pen, there's not much really more to say about the pen, I'm just using a regular biro. The ruler, you need an accurate ruler, preferably metal, especially if you're using a craft knife or rotary cutter alongside it. But as long as you can measure with it and draw a straight line with it, you're totally fine. A bulldog clip. These are very, very useful for holding your book together whilst you're working on it or whilst the glue dries. You could instead use something like a flower press, but a bulldog clip is perfect for the job and it's also cheap to buy from places that sell stationery. Heavy books may also come in handy when gluing the cover onto the book but a bulldog clip can also be used for that purpose. A drawing pin or push pin. This is simply to put holes into the paper. Beading needles. Beading needles are designed to be thin all the way along and so are perfect for this miniature binding process. I'm using hand sewing needles in size 10 13, but you only need one needle. This pack of four cost me less than two pounds and I bought it off Amazon. Cocktail sticks. You only need one or two of these and they are brilliant for allowing precise gluing. Cocktail sticks are definitely the best way of applying the glue in small areas and they're cheap, efficient and also disposable, which is very handy. Beading thread. This little spool of thread that I bought is Nymo, that's N-Y-M-O, beading thread. It's made of nylon, it's very thin and strong, it doesn't fray, and it's also designed to be used with the beading needles, which I'll be using to bind the book. Scrap cardboard. Any old packaging for this will do. It's simply to put under your work when you're putting holes into your paper so that you don't damage what's underneath, such as your work table. Any sort of thick corrugated card is great for this. Glue. This is Aileen's or Aline's tacky glue. 
Um, it's an all-purpose glue and it dries clear, which is perfect for what I'm using it for. Just regular PVA glue is a great alternative to this. It doesn't have to be this particular one I'm using. Super glue. I'm using UHU all-purpose strong glue. It attaches all sorts of materials, which is exactly what you need it for. This is going to be used to attach metal to paper and also leather to paper. E600 glue is a good alternative. Scissors. You'll need sharp scissors to make sure that you cut cleanly through paper and also possibly leather. Large scissors are best, but you may also find use for smaller ones for any smaller tasks such as trimming the cover. As an alternative, you can use a craft knife or rotary cutter and a cutting mat for most of the cutting tasks in this project. So if you have access to those, then you can make use of those too. And using a ruler alongside the knife or rotary cutter will give you really accurate straight cuts as well. If you have access to a guillotine, then that would really help speed up the paper cutting process. But I'm not going to be using any of those extras, I'm just going to be using scissors just to demonstrate what can be done with just a simple pair of scissors. Leather. You can get creative with the cover and use other materials like felt, but I'm going to show you how to add a nice leather cover. I bought my leather cheaply off eBay as part of a small job lot of leather offcuts. You could also search for leather de-stash and you'll find that people who work in leather sell off their leftover little pieces of leather online and you can get them for a really good price. You can also get a selection of different colours in these job lots, which would be nice if you want to make a variety of books. Paper. Last but not least, you'll need just some regular printer or copier paper. It's best to use thin paper like this and not go particularly thick because then it's easy to cut, fold and will lie flat when it's folded, which is very important when making a book. Hopefully you'll have access to quite a few of these items already, but any that you do need should be available very cheaply. I'm now going to run through some optional extra items that you could purchase to add as embellishments or to turn the books into other items such as a necklace. Bone folder. These are used by dragging them along folds in paper to make them sharp and crisp. Since I'm using thin paper for this project, bone folders aren't necessary. But if you wanted to use thicker paper at some point, bone folders might be more helpful to you when trying to get the folios and signatures to lie flat. Faux headbands. You'll sometimes see headbands on older, more expensive hardback books and they can be seen at either end of the spine of the book, just inside the cover. They are made from scratch using embroidery techniques usually, but this takes a lot of time and patience. Plus it would really be fiddly when trying to do it in miniature. So if you want to add this little detail to your books, I'd recommend buying faux headbands instead. I bought mine off Etsy.com, that's E-T-S-Y.com, from a shop in Greece actually, for around eight quid. In total, I got enough faux headbands to make, I don't know, probably a hundred mini books. So you get plenty for your money. Um, they arrive in the form of a long tape and you just cut off the amount that you need to use. Of course, you only need a really small amount for each mini book that you make. It's probably not worth buying them if you're only making one book, but otherwise I think they're a really lovely addition. Cord or ribbon. If you want to add a tie to your book, just to wrap around your book and secure it closed, then I'm going to be showing you in this project how to do that using a satin ribbon. You could also use any other sort of ribbon or cord or even very thin lace strips. As long as you use something that's flat on one side so that it can be glued onto the book. Here is a book that I have previously made where I use suede cord as the tie. And I think it looks really effective. And this is a really good alternative to ribbon because it actually grips onto itself so it's actually really easy to tie in a knot and the knot will stay secured, even a single knot. Jewelry tools. 
If you're planning to make the book into a charm, you will require pliers and most likely a wire cutter. If you're not going to be making a charm, such as for a keyring or a necklace, but are instead just making a miniature book, then you won't need any of these tools, so don't worry. Jewellery findings. Depending on if you're using the book as a charm, you will need a few extras. To make the book into a charm, you can use either a wire eye pin or a flat metal oval charm. And then in addition to that, you'll need a jump ring. The oval charms I've got here are simply oval metal shapes with a hole in one side and can be glued onto the back of the book or inside it. They seem to sometimes be referred to as cabochon backs. The eye pin can be glued to the spine of the book to attach it, which I will be demonstrating in this class. Depending on what you are making, you might want more items like a necklace chain and a clasp or a keyring chain. Just as a side note, all of the findings that I use are brass and I bought them from either eBay or Etsy. Hello and welcome to my first lesson which is all about preparing the paper to make the book pages. The very first thing I did was to cut out a template that is two inches wide and one and a quarter inches tall. I just drew this out with a ruler and pen on regular printer paper, copy of paper and cut it out with scissors. The finished book will be just over half the size of this template. The aim of this exercise is to end up with 25 pieces of paper all blank that are exactly the same size as this template. So that's 25 pieces that are two inches wide and one and a quarter inches tall. If you have a guillotine, this job is so much easier. You just simply cut two inch strips with a guillotine and then cut those strips into one and a quarter inch pieces. But because everybody has a pair of scissors, but not necessarily a guillotine or a craft knife or rotary cutter, I'm going to be demonstrating this process with just scissors. So the first thing I did was to get an A4 sheet of printer paper or copy paper just regular paper. So I laid the A4 sheet down and placed the template at the bottom left hand edge of the paper. I moved it slightly across, maybe about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I then put a mark, again about a quarter of an inch, to the right of where the template sits. I then moved the template across and did exactly the same, so that the template lies about a quarter of an inch from the last mark you just made and then made another mark, about a quarter of an inch, to the right of the template. You don't have to be accurate with this and you don't need to use a ruler. You then move the template back along the page, keeping it a quarter of an inch above the bottom edge and making marks a quarter of an inch above the template as you go. You then take your scissors and using the first three marks that you made, you cut the paper into strips of that width. You can use a ruler here if it helps you keep the lines straight. They don't have to be perfectly straight, but approximately. So now we've got three strips that are a little bit bigger, maybe about half an inch wider than your template. The next thing to do is fold each strip at the point where you place the second lot of marks. So you fold just at the mark, which is approximately one and three quarters inches from the bottom of the strip. You fold the paper into a concertina so that each layer is the same size. If you have any excess left at the end, don't worry about that. The next thing to do is place your template on top of this concertina of paper and hold it in place securely. Just grip it as firmly as you can 
and use your scissors to cut around the template and cut through all of the layers at the same time. Try and keep the cuts as straight as possible through each layer. And you'll end up with several pieces that are exactly the same size as your template. You simply repeat this process for each of the strips of paper. And you keep going like this until you have those 25 pieces of paper that are the same size as your template. The next step is to fold each of these pieces of paper in half, straight down the middle as indicated on my template. Each folded piece of paper creates two leaves, or four pages, for your book. An important point to note is that each folded piece of paper is actually called a folio. I will be referring to folios quite often in the upcoming lessons. At any point you need to fold a piece of paper in this whole process, please feel free to use a bone folder if you have one to make the fold extra crisp. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use your nails and just run the fold between your fingernails just to make the fold sharper. If the fold is sharp, then the paper lies flat and it just looks so much better. Ideally, you want all paper folds to be nice and crisp. You should now have 25 folded pieces of paper, i.e. 25 folios. The next step is to place five folios inside each other to create what is called a signature. So you put one folio inside another, inside another, inside another and inside another and that is a signature. You do this five times to create five signatures. If you look at the edge of the signature, you'll see that it has a pointed edge rather than it being totally flat and even. If you have a guillotine, you can even up this edge by just trimming it and taking off that point. I have tried to trim it off with just scissors, but it just ends up looking really messy. So if you're using scissors rather than a guillotine, which I am, just leave it like this, it will look perfectly good at the end. It just won't be a flat edge. So simply stack all of your folios and you'll end up with five signatures. You now need to stack these signatures on top of each other so that the folded edges are all on the same side. Make sure that all the edges are as even as possible so that all the pages are lined up as well as you can get them to line up. Check all the angles and once you've done that take your bulldog clip and place the five signatures inside. The clip should hold them securely in place. You might not be able to get them completely even, but the sides should all line up as best as you can get them to line up. The next step is to mark where you're going to make the holes on the folded edges of your signatures. To do this, measure a quarter of an inch from each end of the spine of the book. Try and be as accurate as you can. Simply mark a quarter of an inch on each side and then mark it all the way down the edges of all five signatures. You'll end up with two lines 
drawn straight down the spine. Try and get these to be as parallel as possible. Each of these marks represents where you're going to have to create holes in the signatures. Just in preparation for the next step of binding, I'm now going to prepare the needle and thread. So I take a needle from my beading needle pack and I take my Dymo nylon thread. The very least you need of the thread is two inches per signature. I'm going to use 10 inches therefore, however later on in the video you'll see that this is only just about enough and makes it a bit fiddly. So I would suggest using about 14 inches just to be on the safe side. I'm now just going to thread the needle. You then need to tie a simple knot, just a single knot will do, about two inches from the end. and just pull that knot nice and tight. I'm just going to take the pages out of the bulldog clip and lay them out ready for the next stage which is putting holes into the folded edges. And I'm going to leave the needle and thread to one side just for now. For the hole making stage you're going to need a piece of scrap cardboard. Corrugated cardboard just from packaging is perfect. You can see the holes in it from where I've used this already. This particular bit of cardboard is from some Amazon packaging as you can see so most people have this kind of packaging in their house already. All you need is just a scrap piece that's as wide or at least as wide rather as your book pages. You need to make a fold down the centre of it and then you need to take one of your signatures and fold it round the other way. So reverse the fold so that the marks that you created down the spine are now on the inside of the signature. You place the signature in your folded bit of cardboard and you can squash it in between if you like just to reinforce that fold. Make sure all the paper is even and lined up and that the fold is inside the fold of the card. You then take a drawing pin or push pin and press it into the paper all the way through whilst the scrap cardboard is slightly bent. Make sure that you have scrap cardboard underneath this piece so that when the pin goes through it doesn't mark your table and yes I did learn that through practice. So ignore me, just make sure you have scrap cardboard to protect your work surface. Once you've pushed the pin through both marks in your signature, take the signature out of the scrap cardboard and insert the pin once again all the way through just to reinforce that hole and make sure it's big enough for the needle to go through later. Then you just repeat the process 
with the other signatures. So now I'm just going to demonstrate that one last time for the last signature. So you place your signature, which you've reversed the fold of, inside the scrap cardboard. Make sure that the fold of the paper sits inside the fold of the cardboard. Then take your pin and push it through the marks in the paper, making sure that the paper edges are all lined up nice and neat, and keeping the scrap cardboard bent. Insert the pin once again into each of the holes, just to reinforce them. And that's it, you've now completed all five signatures and you're ready to go on to the next stage which is binding. So I'll see you in the next lesson. First step is to feed the needle from the outside to the inside on your first signature through one set of holes. Pull the thread until the knot reaches the outside of the signature. You then take your needle and go out of the signature through the other set of holes. You then take your next signature and put it on top of the first. What you want to do here is go into the adjacent set of holes from where the thread leaves the first signature. So in this case the thread leaves the first signature on the left hand side and therefore will enter the set of holes on the left hand side in the second signature. So feed the needle into the second signature and then back out again. If you're finding it difficult to push your needle through the holes, just get out your drawing pin again and push it through the holes just to make them a bit bigger and make it easier for the needle to slide through. When you are tightening the thread, which is what you will need to do between attaching each signature, pull to the side rather than up or down. This will help you prevent tearing the paper. So just make sure the thread is tightened between the first and second signatures. You will see that on the right hand side, the signatures are not connected. So at this point, you will use the thread that's attached to the needle and tie a knot with the tail end of the thread that is coming out of the first signature. All you have to do is tie one simple knot and then another to create a double knot. Make sure this is tight. You have now attached the first signature to the second. Then trim the tail end of the thread so that it's not longer than the book. About half an inch of tail is perfect. Take your third signature and do exactly the same thing by placing it on top of the second signature and taking your needle from the outside in through the set of holes adjacent 
to where the thread leaves the second signature. So in this case, you're going into the right hand set of holes in the third signature. Then you're threading the needle out of the left hand set of holes in the third signature. But here you don't have a tail end of thread to knot the thread on your needle with. So at this point you're going to do a kettle stitch. I like to work a kettle stitch from the centre of the spine of the book to the outside edge. Simply take your needle and go under the thread between the first and second signatures. So you take the needle down through the ridge that lies between the first and second signatures, feed the needle under the thread and pull. Don't fully tighten the thread though. Just notice that as you tighten it, a loop forms at the spine of the book. You're now going to thread your needle back through this loop before tightening. This is a kettle stitch. If you decide to take up bookbinding as a hobby, you'll find that the kettle stitch is a very commonly used technique. So now you just need to make sure that none of the threads are loose and then you do exactly the same for your fourth signature that you've done for your third. So you take the fourth signature, put it on top of the third signature and then you're going to go through the set of holes on the left first this time and then you're going to come out the right set of holes. You're then going to do a kettle stitch. I'm speeding up this section of the video because I've already showed you all the steps involved and I don't want to make it repetitive and too boring for you. The difference for the kettle stitch for the fourth signature is that you take your needle from the centre of the spine once again to the outside edge but this time you're going to the right outside edge and you're going to take your needle under the thread through the ridge between the second and third signatures. You then add the fifth signature, that's the fifth and final signature, by going in through the right hand set of holes and out through the left hand set of holes. I've just put the book pages inside the bulldog clip just to make it easier to see this next bit. So what I do at the end is I do another kettle stitch, this time between the third and fourth signatures and then, and I'm just going to sh slow this bit down, I'm going to do another kettle stitch, this time between the second and third signatures. Basically all you're doing is just securing the end of the thread. You don't have to do this in any particular way, just add some knots using the thread between the previous signatures. Then all you have to do is cut off the excess thread, leaving around half an inch, and that's it, you've finished the binding. To begin this class, you should now have a hand-bound book made up of five signatures, with two tails of thread leaving it. I'm going to use an all-purpose glue, very much like PVA glue for this section. I'm just folding up some scrap paper and putting some glue onto it. You don't need very much glue for this, just enough to cover the spine of the book. Now you need to take your cocktail stick and apply the glue to the spine of the book. The cocktail stick allows you to be very precise and neat with the application of the glue. Try to lie the tails of the thread in the ridges between the signatures. But don't poke the glue down through the pages because the last thing you want in this stage is to glue the pages together so you can't open them. So just apply the glue all over except at the edges. 
you want to leave a few millimetres or about a quarter of an inch at each end of the spine. This is once again just to avoid the possibility of gluing the pages together. So just to be on the safe side, leave some of the spine clear of glue at each end. Make sure the glue lies in all the ridges and embeds the tails of thread inside. You just need a thin coating of glue. Once you've done this, all you need to do is leave it to dry or at least nearly dry. It doesn't have to be completely bone dry, it can still be a little tacky for the next step. If you want to add an eye pin to the book to turn it into a charm, then please carry on listening to this video. I will also explain how to add faux headbands to the spine of the book. If you don't want to add an eye pin or faux headbands to your book, please feel free to stop the lesson here and carry on to my next lesson which will be all about adding the cover to the book. The first part of adding the eye pin involves working out where you want to position it on the spine of the book. This will determine how long the eye pin needs to be also. Once you've done this you can cut the excess part of the wire off so that it leaves you with an eye pin the correct size. It doesn't need to go all the way down to the end of the book, just a little bit further up is perfect. You want the loop of the eye pin to sit slightly above the book. You don't want it to be sitting so it's resting on the pages. This is because you'll be adding a cover later, which will make the spine a little bit longer, and you want the loop to sit above the cover, not to be hidden by it. If you think that your charm is going to have to be extra durable, perhaps if you're using it as a keyring, it'll need to withstand a bit more wear and tear. If this is the case, it will be best to use super glue to attach the eye pin at this point. I, however, have found that just all-purpose glue that I used previously works absolutely fine when using the charm as a necklace. Just glue the eye pin to the spine in the centre exactly where you want it positioned. Cover the eye pin using the cocktail stick and the glue. Make sure that the wire is sitting flat against the spine, the loop sits flat and that it's completely embedded in the glue. Once again make sure that you don't put glue too close to the ends of the spine. Then all you need to do is leave this to dry. The next optional extra you can add to the spine of your book in this section are faux headbands. Faux headbands are just imitations of real headbands which you'll often see on older, more expensive, fancier books where it's stripy embroidery just inside the cover of the book at either end of the spine. These are made from scratch using embroidery techniques normally but on this scale and because you don't want to spend hours making this, it's a lot easier to use faux headbands. All you have to do is cut the headbands into strips that are the same width as the spine of your book, then simply glue them to either end of the spine. I like to taper the white part of the faux headbands just so the edges don't stick out of the spine. You need to place one piece at one end and one piece at the other. My glue is already slightly tacky so I don't need to put glue underneath it but if your glue is completely dry just put a little bit of glue underneath the white part of the headband to attach it to the spine. Then you just need to add a bit more glue just on the white part not on the stripy part of the headband all over the top just to secure it. This is a completely optional embellishment, but I think it adds in a really nice detail. You simply need to just leave that to dry now and move on to the next lesson, which will be all about adding the leather cover to the book.
you'll need some super glue. In this case, I'm using UHU all purpose glue, which is stronger than the previous glue that I used. You can use E600 or any other craft glue, strong craft glue that you like. I'm also using black leather. You can use one to two millimeter thick leather for this, or even thicker if you want, but it's just easier to handle if it's a nice soft and quite thin leather. Make sure you have a piece of leather that is big enough to wrap around your book and have a little bit of excess around the edges. Lay the book down on the leather and draw along one edge. Make sure not to get pen on your paper. Move the book slightly to the left. This gap will be the lip of the cover, which is how much bigger the cover will be compared to your book. You want the cover to be slightly wider and slightly taller than your book. So you then mark where you would like the top of your leather cover to finish and the bottom of the leather cover to finish. You then slowly flip the book over all the way onto the other side and then you draw another line the same distance away from your book as you previously used. This will be the lip on the other side of the cover. I like to use a lip of one or two millimetres above and below, a very, very small amount. But it's completely up to you, it's all down to personal preference and how big you would like the cover to be compared to your book. You then use these marks to draw a rectangle which will be the size of your leather cover. Make sure the corners are square and each opposite edge measures the same distance. Once you've done this and join the marks with a ruler, you can then cut it out. If you have a Stanley knife, ruler and cutting mat, you can use this method, which will give you nice accurate lines. I'm using scissors, so if you're using scissors too, just try your best to cut the lines as straight as you possibly can. Once you have cut that out and verified that it's the right size for your book, you need to add the super glue straight onto the inside of the leather piece. Make sure that you don't put the glue very close to the edges. This is because once you wrap the leather around your book, you don't want the glue to squeeze out onto the edges of your book and stick the pages together. You don't need very much glue, just enough to stick it to your book. You don't want excess glue. You then stick your book carefully onto the leather cover, making sure that it's centered. Wrap the leather around the book and squeeze all over to make sure that the book is in complete contact with the leather. You can then put the book inside the bulldog clip or put it under some heavy books until it dries. Once it's dry, you can then add some more glue if you find that the leather is not attached to the paper around the edges very well. Because we didn't put glue very near the edges just to be on the safe side, you might find that some of the corners or edges aren't glued securely. If this is the case, simply squeeze some super glue out onto some scrap paper and use your cocktail stick from earlier to apply the glue precisely just at the corners and edges that are not sticking down. Once again, put it in a bulldog clip or under some heavy books to leave it to dry. The very last step of the process is to add the tie. 
You can use many different ribbons and cords as the tie, but in this case I'm using a narrow satin ribbon. You're best off using something that has a flat side because a good surface area for gluing is essential. To work out how long your ribbon needs to be, wrap it round the book and tie it in a bow the same size as you want in the finished item. Any excess ribbon can be cut off. You then lay the spine of the book on the centre of the ribbon and wrap it round so that the edges of the ends line up. Make sure the ribbon is completely centred, then grip it onto the book and use a cocktail stick to apply the super glue. Carefully peel back the ribbon at one side of your book. Apply the super glue under where you want the ribbon directly onto the lever. Make sure the glue doesn't stick out from where you want the ribbon. Make sure you keep the glue nice and centered and in one narrow line. Keep adding the super glue bit by bit all along the centre of the book, directly below where you want the ribbon to lie. Go all the way around like this until you have glued the ribbon on and it is completely centred. Then place this in the bulldog clip or under some heavy books again and leave to dry. And once that's dry, you have one finished book, all ready for you to write in. If you've been following along with me, well done, you have now reached the end of the class. If you've reached this video, I hope that you've either gone through all my other lessons or you've actually made a miniature book charm. And if you've made one, well done. And thank you for participating and I can't wait to see it in the class project page. There are a few variations you can try, which I'm just going to run through very quickly now, just to give you maybe some ideas uh, for what to try next time or this time if you want to do something a bit different to what I've done. Just to start with, I'm going to show you how I attach a jump ring to the eye pin just to finish off the charm and allow it to be attached to a necklace chain or keyring chain. I simply take a pair of pliers or you can use two pairs of pliers to open the ring and put it onto the eye pin and close. If you want to use something different from an eye pin to attach the jump ring and necklace or keyring chain, 
you can use this, which is a flat oval brass charm. They're often also called cabochon backs. You can glue it to the back of the leather cover or the book, or you can embed it inside the pages and glue it there. However, you have to be careful not to get the glue on the ends of the book. You then simply add a jump ring to the hole, just like you would the eye pin. If you have an eyelet setter, you could instead put an eyelet in the corner of the book or the cover. Another idea is to add a very small piece of cheesecloth or other loose weave fabric around the centre of the spine of the book. This is done in the regular book binding process, so this is just a way of miniaturising that process. It's completely optional and not in any way necessary, but if you wanted to miniaturise all the things that book binders do, this is just one more thing that you can add. It does add a little bit more durability to the spine. You can also use different types of paper inside the book. So you could use different colours, you could use graph paper, lined paper, you could use, um, you could rip the edges to make it look more rustic. You could tea stain the paper to make it look aged. If you use distressed leather, like really aged leather along, alongside tea staining the paper and ripping the edges, you could make a really aged looking book, which would be pretty cool. If you use a thicker paper, you've got to be careful because the thicker the paper, the harder it is to fold it and make it lie flat. So if you're, if for instance, you're using a thicker paper like watercolour paper, which you can, you won't want to use five folios in a single signature. You might in fact want to only use one folio per signature. So it's just one folio stacked, folios stacked on top of each other single ones um, because if you put thick paper folios inside other thick paper folios it's difficult to then make them lie flat especially um, on the edges it will be pretty bumpy not smooth. If you would like to rip the edges of the paper rather than create a clean cut with a guillotine or scissors this is how you do it. You simply fold the paper where you'd like to make the rip in this case I've made the fold 2 inches from the edge because this is the width of the template. I make sure the fold is crisp and sharp. I then dip my finger in some regular tap water and rub it along the outside of the fold. The water weakens the paper along the fold allowing you to rip it neatly and easily. And those are all my ideas for variations. I'm sure you could come up with so many more ideas, so much more creative and interesting, and I'd love to see them on the class project page. Thank you very much for enrolling in my class and listening along. I really appreciate it and I hope that you've had fun. Thank you.